podcast. My name's Marina, I'm a knitwear designer and yarn dyer based in Bath in the southwest of England and on this channel I talk about my craft projects, mostly knitting and yarn related but also some seasonal making as well. Now I think in the last video I was sort of complaining about how much rain we'd had recently considering we'd had such a dry month the month before and over the last few weeks we've had so much beautiful weather which has meant I've been able to spend a lot more time outside, been able to enjoy the countryside going on lovely long walks and working outside in the garden which has been really lovely, just being able to take some of my work out to a little shady patch and enjoy the birdsong while I'm working on the computer or on knitwear designs is just really really lovely. But Today it's clouded over and it's starting to rain a bit, which honestly the countryside needs. Um, we seem to be going through spells of lots of rain and then no rain and then lots of rain again. And I'd rather they just alternate a bit more frequently. Um, you know, a few days of rain, a few days of sun would be much better. But the fact that it's a little bit cooler today means that I can double up on the wool layers and show you some of the things I've been working on recently. Now the cardigan I'm wearing is one that I released the pattern for yesterday and if you've been watching for a while or seen the podcast before you might have seen this either in its in progress stage or when I finished it a couple of months ago. Uh, since then it's been in test knitting and I encourage you to go and look if you're able to use Ravelry. Go on Ravelry and check out the tester projects because there are so many amazing colour combinations there and beautiful versions that people have made. This is the Galdor cardigan, which is G-A-L-D-O-R, and I've had a few questions about what it means. It is an Old English word, as a lot of my pattern names are, and it means like an incantation or enchantment, which is just... I wanted the pattern to be sort of quite whimsical and... Um, yeah, not, not entirely grounded in reality, something that you can sort of take yourself out to the woods and forget what time period you're in and just, yeah, it's very floaty and really nice for layering. So it's got these nice loose sleeves, um, it's got the colour work around the neck and around the cuffs on the sleeves and I'm really really pleased with it because it's something that is I don't know, when I designed it I thought that it was a little bit less perhaps wearable than some of my other designs because it's quite an unusual shape, it's, um, it's definitely not really following any kind of current trends as far as I can tell, um, but I, it, I originally came up with the design in response to a uh, call for submissions from Emma from Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company and the concept she came up with was really interesting. It was about the intersection between the arts and crafts movement of the late 1800s and early 1900s um, and how they took inspiration from uh, the medieval period. And so you've got this interesting thing of the aesthetics of two very different time periods and seeing the things they have in common. And there was a lot of appreciation of uh, making things slowly, doing things by hand, and sort of the idea that if you're going to make something, make it useful but also make it beautiful. And it's a concept I really love and it's something I wanted to explore a little bit. And it's been really, really wonderful as a layering piece. I didn't expect it to be quite as wearable as it is. Because um, I, I, I kind of thought, you know, you, it's got these loose sleeves, your forearms are still going to get cold, it doesn't close. So it's actually so good for layering when, you know, it's, it's a bit warmer and the evenings start to cool down and it's just something you can throw on but it's still really loose and comfortable so it doesn't feel like you're being swamped by anything. Um, so yeah, it's something I am really really proud of. Um, I've been amazed by the response so far uh, to the pattern. People have been really really kind and encouraging. Um, I'm hoping to see lots of people knitting it. Um, 
Emma of Woolly Mam Fibre Company had a shop update recently with um, some yarns that are the same specs that I used for this one. Um, I used limited edition yarns, so she's got some of the same yarn, so the Dorset that I've used uh, as the white background colour in the colour work, she has had some of that. Um, she's also had a new Svartbliss yarn spun up uh, to the same spec as the main colour I've used here, and it's really fun to have a design that ties into those smaller batches that Emma's creating from uh, local fibre that she is able to source within her area um, and you know find a use for wool that otherwise probably wouldn't be used for anything useful or beautiful. Um, so yeah I'm going to show you some of the details because um, it's got a, a more interesting construction than you might suspect just by looking at it. Um, and so I'm going to show you those. So I will take it off to do so. Um, so the whole thing is actually worked in the round uh, because there's a lot of stock in it. And with the colour work and things, I do not like doing colour work flat. My pearl tension is terrible. I've mentioned this before. Um, and so I decided to do the whole thing in the round and then it's got quite a few steaks. So I recorded a video which is a few videos back on my channel. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description box below where I'll have all the details of the pattern and everything. Um, and that just shows a fairly detailed tutorial for how to do the steaks and also what the garment looks like at the stage where you're about to do the body steaks just so you can sort of get your head around it, because I know that steaking can be a bit intimidating and I can totally see why. I was scared when I was doing this, because if I'm following someone else's pattern and I'm doing steaks, it's fine because I know that they've done all of the work beforehand, they know that everything works out, and so I'm just creating that some, someone else has created, and that's fine. But with this, there was the fact that I couldn't try it on once the body was completed before I was doing the steaks. And usually with doing designs, there's always the knowledge that if it goes wrong, I can rip it back, I can start again. You know, even if it's a bit troublesome to rip it back, I can do that. I can rewind up the yarn, I can give it a rinse, I can steam it, whatever. The yarn is usable again. If you steak something that you, you aren't sure about, you can't use that yarn because you've cut the whole thing in half. Um, so for it was the first time I was nervous about steaking because I just wanted to make sure that I'd got it right. And I was so relieved when I did it because, you know, all of my calculations had worked out beautifully. The fit was exactly what I was hoping for. And yeah, really pleased with that. So the video is there to sort of talk you through it and hopefully try to make it a bit less scary because you can go and see on Ravelry that a lot of other people have made it, have done the steaks, it's worked out fine for them. Um, and yeah, it's not as scary as it seems. And it's also quite fun, just slicing your knitting in half is, yeah, it's satisfying somehow. Um, so it's steaked and then you pick up stitches for the front band which is again worked in the round and then there's another weird steek there um, where there are details for that in the pattern. And I've done it so that the front band and the sleeves are completely faced. Um, so you knit those in a contrast colour and then stitch them down, which completely hides the floats of the colour work because I didn't, like with it being an open cardigan and not one you can button up, I didn't want it to sort of fly open and then you just see all the floats here. I think it would be a bit ugly. So I wanted to make sure that there was a really nice quality finish on all the bits that you might see when you're wearing it. So the cuffs are completely faced as well um, and they're stitched down to give this sort of nice wide sleeve like that. And then this is a bit I'm particularly pleased with. At the back we've got the um, the little vines are done symmetrically to make sure that they're both growing up on the front 
and then on the sleeves they both grow around in the correct direction. So you can see there. Um, and yeah, I really like the little detail at the centre back neck. Um, I think it's really cute. And so, yeah, it's a really fun design. Um, it's one that I'm very, very proud of and I'm really pleased that other people seem to be enjoying it as well because um, it's, it's me finding a style that is a bit more me and okay I'm gonna do a tiny bit of story time. When I was a teenager I wanted to be a costume designer so I did a lot of work with operas. Um, I first got into sewing in a serious way uh, because of the costumes in Lord of the Rings, which I thought were incredible. Um, if you didn't know, I am quite into dorky stuff like that. You shouldn't be surprised. Um, yes, really loved the mixing of historical and fantasy elements. I think a lot of fantasy costumes um, can be a bit gaudy. Um, and I really liked the way that Lord of the Rings costumes felt historical, even though they kind of weren't. Um, they draw from historical elements, which is something that I like to do. I like to uh, take a very specific thing of a style and take it into something completely different. Um, so yeah, I wanted to be a costume designer. I spent so much time sewing uh, historical patterns, um, not doing things completely correctly uh, in terms of like I, I didn't go the whole hog with the hand stitching everything and sourcing period accurate fabrics and stuff. I was just enjoying myself. Um, did a lot of work on operas in the wardrobe department which was loads of fun. Um, and then you know I went to university and studied languages and it was all very different and I kept drawing and did some knitting and things um, but I used to dress like really quite weirdly when I was in sixth form and could wear whatever I wanted. I'd go in wearing like massive skirts with giant petticoats and stuff because it's like I'm 17 and the way I dress in this environment literally doesn't matter. Um, so I can dress in whatever way I choose and it's loads of fun and I knew that it wasn't going to be something I'd do forever but that was super fun. And it is really nice after quite a long time to have sort of come back to the point where I am designing things that are possibly slightly off kilter, a little bit unusual but are very much my personal style and that that seems to resonate with people and I'm able to do that and kind of make a living from it. It's quite amazing. Um, so yeah, I want to say thank you to all the people who have got the Caldor Cardigan pattern already. Um, and yeah. So now I'm going to show you this top, which is one that I have just finished and is the next in my design queue. So this one is one that's designed again to be sort of for uh, summery weather but an English summer where sun isn't actually guaranteed and you might want to feel summery but also have a bit of warmth going on as well. Um, so it's in a very lightweight yarn um, and the yarn is uh, Vintage 24 ply by Wool Decanted. Um, I think I mentioned them in a previous episode when I was working on this top uh, it's a really, really lovely yarn. It is soft. It's lovely to wear against the skin. Um, I really love this natural colour. It's like it's, it's. I mean, it's basically beige. That's the the word beige is so very uninspiring. I think we go with oatmeal when you want it to sound a bit nicer. Um, but it's, I think, a mostly white yarn, uh, white wool with some brown blended in, which just gives it that warm shade. Um, and so yeah, I have done, just stand up a bit so I can show you. So it's got a split hem, you start at the bottom 
and then it's just got these little travelling stitch details down sides and then at the underarm they split and one goes up over the shoulder on the front and one goes over on the back and then you've got this nice round neck it's one that is fairly simple um, there's not a huge amount going on the stitch pattern is very very easy to remember um, you can sort of get the hang of it after a couple of repeats which means that most of the body and things is fairly mindless but isn't because you've got the little panels at the side it has a little bit more going on just to add some interest and keep you engaged slightly um so yes this is one that i'm just finishing off with my tech editor uh just ironing out and making sure the pattern's in really good shape then it's going to go to test knitters and it'll be released uh later in on in the summer probably towards the end of august um so yes if you want to join my mailing list for test knitters so if you want to hear when i have new test knits coming out um i'll put a link to that below you can sign up there and that will mean that you are notified when new test knits are open to apply for uh, it doesn't mean that you'll be signed up automatically to join the test knit um, it just means that you know when they are open and then you can decide whether or not you want to take part and yeah i i do want to give a quick shout out to all of my test knitters because uh, you know, test knitting is a lot of work. Um, there's generally a deadline that I think for a lot of people is slightly faster than you would want to knit it yourself. Um, I know that having a deadline on projects is always a little bit nerve wracking, um, especially if it's not something you do for a job. Um, and so many of my test knitters have done really, really lovely jobs. So I just want to appreciate that. So I'm going to show you a sneaky peek of one other design that I've just finished off the sample for. I did show a sneaky peek in the last episode. Um, I think I just showed the hem off in that one. But as I finish the sample now, and I'm too excited not to talk about this, um, I'm going to show you a very quick glimpse of the whole thing. This is a design for making stories um, for issue seven. So it won't actually be published until March next year because um, you know, as an indie designer, it can feel like some of the lead times on designs are fairly long. You know, you come up with the idea, you might approach a yarn company to see if they want to offer yarn support. Then you knit the sample, then you do tech editing, then it goes through test knitting, then you've got to get everything ready for publication. Whereas in a uh, printed magazine, you've got that multiplied by however many patterns there are. And you've also got the whole printing process and getting it out to distributors and everything. So it's, yeah, it's a whole deal. Um, and so I don't want to wait until March to get excited about this. So I'm just going to show you really quickly. Hee. So it's a really fun design. It's called Fanlight. Um, and... Yeah, it's once again me doing something that kind of feels like a little bit weird, but I really, really like it. And I'm really glad that um, Hannah Lisa and Claire at Making Stories liked it enough to want to publish it. Um, it's really exciting. So this is knitted in my own yarn in Mendip 4 ply. So the body is the undyed white sheep colourway. So that's the sunny base. And then the two contrast colours are Bloom and Rose, both on the Stormy colourway, uh, the Stormy base, sorry. And so, yeah, I'm super pleased with it. It's got some lovely details and I know they're going to do a beautiful job photographing that and putting it into their lovely magazine. And I've worked with Making Stories quite a lot. Um, they are friends of mine and... You know, when I submitted it, I, I was just thinking, this is a bit weird. Like, this would work fine as an independently published pattern, but are they going to go for it for a magazine? And I'm really, really glad that they liked it enough uh, to want to publish it. So, 
yeah, it's very exciting. It's still, I, I think I've mentioned before, I still feel like quite a new designer, even though I've been publishing patterns since the end of 2018. Um, it, yeah, it still, it still all feels, there are lots of exciting things going on and it's nice to see that people are liking what I'm doing. Um, so yes, now I'm going to show you a slightly strange project. Um, I've been doing a lot of quite fine knitting. Um, I mean, this top I knitted on 2.5 millimeter needles. Um, despite that, it worked up really quite quickly. Um, and the yarn was so like smooth and lovely to work with that it didn't feel like it dragged at all. Um, but as a sort of counter to that, I wanted to do something big and chunky and slightly mad. Um, enter the basket of weirdness. Um, so in here I've got all sorts of yarn um, that are all things I had in my stash. We've got a whole variety of stuff from commercial ones to bits of hand spun to um, some that I used to use for weavings, uh, for like wall hangings and things. Uh, there's a whole mishmash of stuff in here. And I'm making a big giant chunky cardigan thing. Um, I have talked more about this, um, this particular project in a video on Patreon where I've talked about uh, how I'm using the yarn and the stitch patterns and how I'm sort of putting everything together. Um, I think that once it's finished I will put it up not as a pattern but as a kind of recipe uh, on Patreon um, just for subscribers there. Um, I don't want to do it as a pattern because so much of it depends, like I won't be able to do yarn estimations because I'm working with so many different things and holding them together and it, yeah, the margins would be ridiculous. Um, so I think as a little recipe thing, it'll work quite well. Um, so yes, it's very much my colours. When it's finished, I will be able to truly blend in with my sofa. Um, and yeah, it's colours that make me really happy. I'm working on eight millimetre needles, um, which is super fun. I don't remember the last time I used needles this big because um, I've just been doing a lot of quite fine knitting. Um, so yeah, big mad chunky project. I'm going to be working on that again soon now that I've finished off these couple of samples and I'm very much at a sort of in-betweeny stage with my knitting where usually when I finish things it, I immediately want to cast on new things um, and while I do have quite a few designs queued up um, I am I'm not taking a break but I'm just taking a few days of like not knitting um, and then I'll be getting back into it. Uh, but I am, I've been doing more basket making, um, which if you've been watching the last few episodes, you will have seen a bit of. This one, by the way, because I know people will ask, I didn't make this basket. This is one that was given to me uh, by a family member. Um, it's a beautiful one, uh, really, really lovely willow. And, Yes, so not handmade, but I've got a couple here that are, one isn't quite finished um, because I have run out of material and I need to go foraging in the woods. So the first one is one I made over the weekend and it's not very good, I will admit. Um, up, up to the point where you reach the edging, I think it's very nice, but then after that, the edging is all a bit, uh, it's still one of the things that I am not very good at. And I also think in this case it was a poor choice of material. Um, so I used split bramble as the sort of the framework and then I used dandelion stems as the weavers. Um, 
And something that I, I, th I think dandelions get a bad rap. Um, they're, they're nice plants, they're very useful. You can use them for dye, you can eat them. You can eat every single part of a dandelion plant. And they also smell absolutely lovely in the dye pot. They, they smell sweet and floral and really, really nice because you don't think of them as a scented flower. But this smells really, really nice. And yeah, it's got that sort of sweetness to it, which I just didn't expect at all. Um, so yes, strange little basket uh, made from weeds from my garden. Um, again, probably too small to be useful for much. I can use it for storing needles and things while I'm darning. Um, but yeah, you know, free material and a way to kill some time whilst watching nonsense television. Um, and yes, so this is, I hadn't tried a little woven base like this before. Uh, so that was fun and nice. I'm just trying out different techniques and seeing what I can learn because I do have some willow soaking at the moment out in the garden um, which I'm hoping to be able to weave with in the next few days if there's a window where it's not raining um, because the kind of basket I would like to make is going to take a lot of space and if I do it in here I will probably break things so I'm hoping to be able to do some weaving outside. Um, and yes, that's actual nice willow that has been specially prepared for basketry. Uh, so I want to make sure I do a good job. So I've been practicing my techniques as a sort of run up to that to make sure that I don't waste it. Uh, so this one, I'm really pleased with how it's coming along. You can see it's not finished. Uh, it's got a big old gap in the middle because I've run out of ivy. Um, but this one, I'm quite pleased with how it's going. I think it's a really nice shape. Um, I like the slight differences in colour of the ivy. I'm not sure how well they're coming across. Um, I'm really pleased with my little eye of God where the handle joins on. Um, I think I, I've done that more neatly than I have done on previous baskets. So my skills are improving. Um, but yes, we've just got some gaps to fill in. And so next time we go for a walk, I'll make sure to gather some more ivy and dry those out and get them all ready for finishing off this. Uh, one thing I do wish I had done is I've made the frame. So you can see here, you've got these cross pieces, which are what you weave the ivy in and out of. Um, the frame is made of bramble and I wish that I had included another strand of bramble in the handle because it's just a little bit flimsy feeling. Um, and so I can't, I can't really do much about that in terms of structure because it's kind of integral to the construction of the basket. But I think what I'm gonna do is um, I have some vinco growing in my garden, uh, periwinkle, and it needed cutting back so I've got a lot of vines of that that I've gathered which is much finer than the ivy and so it'll be able to take a smaller bend. That's a strange way of saying that. Basically the ivy, I think I need, I'm, I'm still working on picking the best ivy because um, some of them are too brittle, some of them are just too um, too weak and so the ones that are brittle where you have to bend them back on themselves around the frame here I don't know if you can see but they can sort of crack a little bit which um, I think structurally it'll be fine but um, it doesn't look very nice and so I'd like to get a little bit better at knowing sort of how to pick the ivy and, and judge which ivy I'm picking um, and how to soak it for the correct amount of time. As I say, I'm not intending to become a master basket maker or anything. It's just something I'm enjoying working on and improving my skills. Um, so yes, I think I'm going to take the periwinkle 
and just loop it around the handle um, and I might be able to get a few extra strands of per periwinkle going along there just to lend it a little bit more sort of substance. Um, yes, so basket making. Um, honestly not something I really predicted getting into. Um, in fact I there are quite a few things where I've done craft, I've attended craft workshops, um, things like basket making and ceramics and pottery, um, things where I don't necessarily want to get all of the kit to be able to do it at home. Um, so I, look, screen printing, excellent example. There is no way I'm gonna do screen printing at home but having done a screen printing workshop uh, was really, really fun. Um, I used to do a lot more workshops when I was not self-employed um, because I, I had the means to do that a lot more frequently. Now, less so. Uh, hence, being very excited about being able to make things with free stuff I find on the floor. Um, but yes, so I did a basket making course um, at Farnham Maltings, um, which is a lovely place. If you're able to get there for workshops, they're really good and lovely. Um, yeah, so I did a basket making day course there, learned how to make a basket. I still have that basket. It still smells amazing because like cured willow just smells wonderful. Um, and that was sort of that. It was like, right, I, I've done my workshop, I've got my basket, that's great. And I didn't think I was actually going to get into it. And that was years ago. And then, yeah, the realisation that you can make baskets um, not from things that are specially grown and harvested for that purpose, but just things that you can find in your local area. Um, it's just really exciting to me. And... Yeah, it's been lovely to get into a little bit. Now, for one last thing in this episode, I'm going to do something I've not done in a while and share a garden visit. Not my own garden, but one we went to go and see a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we went to Brands Ground in Herefordshire, which is a few hours drive from us, and we went for their closing weekend because I believe the property's been sold and so is now closed to the public. Um, but I just wanted to share that because it's a really, really beautiful garden um, and I thought some of you might enjoy it. And so I'll add that just after the end of everything here. And so if you want to keep up with me between podcast episodes, you can follow me on Instagram where I post fairly regularly. You can sign up to my newsletter on my website um, where you'll get emails once or twice a month. And you can also join on Patreon where I share bonus videos and you can also get discounts and access to Zoom calls and just recently I've added a Discord group for patrons only um, which is something that is only just beginning so it's still very small um, but hopefully will be a really nice way to share projects we're working on and encouragement and inspiration and help each other out with the things that we're working on. Um, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons. Um, there have been quite a few people who have joined up recently, which is just so lovely. It's really, really nice to have people there. And hopefully we'll get to the point where I have enough patrons that will be able to support me doing an additional podcast episode every month. So if that's something you're interested in, please do check out the link below. And every single subscription really, really helps. And so until next time, I hope you enjoy a little garden visit. Bye bye.